There you are, welcome back. Um, I showed you how to tie the super duper pupa, I think it was in stuff five. So I'm gonna try and demonstrate now how to put together this quick tie mayfly. Um, have a look at the market in wings and bodies. Um, I've tried lots of them and I've sort of chosen my three or four favorites to show you. Let's start off, these are real wings. They're from Lakeland Fly Tying. Uh, if you go to Lakeland website, Nigel's a good man there. He gets some very, very good product in. They're a little bit fine uh, for this particular fly, but they're very good on other flies. Um, Veniard also do. These are Jim's Mayfly wings, Jim's wings. These are a little large for what I'm doing at the moment, but very good and very decorative, a nice wing. Um, Veniard also do little bodies like that. Nice little bodies. As do Grip. They distribute a scientific fly. There we are. Little bodies, very nice. Uh, but for this particular fly, I like the Hemingway product. I like their bodies here. You see, they're quite, quite nice, look very realistic. And their wings. Now these wings come in all sorts of sizes and colors. And I've used small, and I think it works the color tan, I think. Small and tan, that's it, yeah. Right, uh, so you put the hook in the vise um, and we run the thread which is called, he said, yes, it's called sheer in a sort of light yellow colour. And what he hasn't done, of course, is put on his tying glasses. Otherwise we'll be fumbling. Oh dear. Age creeps on, never mind. Here we go. You put the, <laughs> put the th thread on the hook. Oh dear. It's gonna be one of those days, I think. And run the thread down and you stop it between the point and the barb or thereabouts. All right, and snip off your thread like that. Now, the bodies. As you will see for this particular fly, the body is rather too large. So what I do is I cut it down. I'll cut it at an angle like this. There we go, little angle. So when you put it on the, on the hook, it sits just nicely. I also cut a tiny slit in the front like that so that when I tie it in, it sits neatly either side of the hook. Very difficult for you to see, but I hope I've described it well enough. So we hold the tail of the fly in position. We do a couple of light wraps just to position it like this. Then we come back over the main body again that to make sure it's absolutely going to stay where I've put it. Okay, there we are. There we are. So that's about right for that. The next thing <clears throat> to do is to tie on the two wings. Now, there is a little problem because these wings, they, they don't peel off. They push out. They push out of this sort of plasticky material. And sometimes they come out perfectly and sometimes they don't. Uh, they have a little tag on the front and the back of the wing. I don't know if you can see that, probably not, but take my word for it. That doesn't always come away with the wings. Uh, so you just have to be a little bit careful and prepare a few before you begin. So you hold the wing over the body like this, halfway down the hook, couple of turns of thread to hold it in position like that. And then come in between the wings and do a little figure of eight wrap. One there and one there. Hold the wings together. Sorry you can't see this and give a little pull. And then wind behind, behind, behind like that until the thread is hard up against the tail. All right. Now I make the, um, make the dubbing out of two CDC feathers. There they are. There's an olive one and a yellow one. And what we do is we put them top to tail like that. And we take them and we put them in our feather folder. Now you can use a Marc Perigon um, block to, to fold them in. Uh, I like them, but I also like this one I use here on my vise, which is from RG France. And you take the two feathers and you put them into the block like this. You push down till they're folded in two. And you take your scissors and you cut off the ends like this. One off there, one off there. Take your clear clip, 
get hold of the feather, take it out so it looks like that, and then cut down the stem. One, turn it round, and two, like that. There we are. Then move back to your thread and take your sewing machine needle, which has secreted itself over there. Here we are. Sewing machine needle and split the thread. You will be told that it's difficult to split this thread. It's not. Simply put your nail under the thread like this, put the point into the thread, and there you have it. A split thread. Then, ta-da! Where's it gone? Where have I put it? It's down here. Jolly good. Take the CDC, put it in between the split thread, remove the clip and then tighten the thread. And there you have it, you see, it's in, in between the split thread, and then spin the bobbin away from the vise. Now I'm left-handed, so I don't know what happens when you're right-handed, you may do it the other way around, I don't know. But give it a good old spin, and when you think you've had enough of it, run your thumb up, and there you have a nice CDC rope. It is quite difficult now to manoeuvre it around the wings. So you'll have to excuse me if I take a little bit of time to do this. Once you've tied the first 550 of these, it'll take you no time at all. Okay, we go once round there, once round there, and then through the wings like that, and back through the rings like that. There we are, then hold the wings, and tie, and then hold back the CDC as you come forward. One, two, three, four. Maybe one for his knob. There we are, five. Jolly good. And then taking your half hitch tool, you can either do a straightforward whip finish here with your fingers or with your tool, but I use one of these because it's quicker. One, two, three. Put it over the eye of the hook and tighten up. There we are. And another two, another three rather, just for the luck. There we are. Oh, lovely. Good show. Um, take a little cut off the thread. Take a little bit of varnish and put it over the, the end like that. Now then, this looks absolutely wonderful on the water because the Camasan B100, size 14, as you see, lots of hook in the water. This is a tip that Steve Thornton gave me a long time ago. It sits up really beautifully, floats down, takes a lot of fish, and, but often, if it's windy or it gets a bit wet, it'll fall over on its side. Don't worry about it. I remember when I was fishing uh, the Avon many, many, many years ago, um, and I was fishing a big fan wing mayfly, and the keeper said, uh, having trouble with those? I said, yes, I know, it keeps twisting the tippet. He looked me straight in the eye and said, don't worry about it. Hold it up, let it untangle, watch the water. He said, in fact, if fly fishermen watch the water more and cast less, they catch many more fish. He might have had a point there. <laughs> anyway, you're, you, the, the fly, as I say, sometimes falls over on its side. Don't worry about it. It just looks like a fly struggling in the surface film. All that CDC holds all the little air bubbles, looks like legs when the fish looks up at it. That's about it for this one. Say goodbye, Ian. Goodbye, Ian. <laughs> Nothing changes. Tight lines, tight threads. Catch a big one and I'll see you next time. Now, if you'd like to see a lot more flies, a lot more fun, and a lot more of my stuff, go to my website. It's at www.chrissanford.com.